Hello, and welcome to the course. I'm your host today, Lee, and I'm speaking with Assistant Professor of Medicine and Human Genetics, Young Im, or Haki, as she's known to her colleagues. Haki works within the Department of Medicine, and she's here to talk to us about her career path and how she became a University of Chicago professor. Haki, can you introduce yourself for me and tell me about your role at the University of Chicago? My name is Hegyung Im. People call me Haki because it's easier. I'm a faculty member at the University of Chicago in the section of genetic medicine. And I do research in statistical genetics and I teach courses related to my research area. So, Haki, how would you describe what you do to someone who is not within your field? So I use uh, statistical tools to sift through large amounts of genomic data that the field is generating, try, try to make sense of them, and make discoveries that can be translated to improve human health. And Haki, where did you grow up? So <laughs> I was born in South Korea, in Busan. My family immigrated to Argentina when I was eight years old. So I grew up in Argentina. So my main language is actually Spanish, not Korean. And then in year 99, my husband and I immigrated to the U.S. So when you were young, were you always interested in the sciences? When I was in high school, I guess, in Argentina, it was after I started to have physics in high school that I got really interested in science and I started to read, you know, science kind of magazines and things like that, popular science kind of uh, material. Haki, is there any memories that you have from high school, middle school, that period in your life that you look back on and you're like, oh, yeah, it totally makes sense that I ended up where I ended up? Yes, I guess so. I always liked math and I was fascinated by, you know, math in general and how you could use math to describe the world. So, yeah, I would say since middle and high school I was, yeah, destined to do something with mathematics applied to some, to science, or I was also considering uh, doing engineering. It was more uh, practical, I guess, to get a job back in Argentina, but I ended up um, in science. And did you know when you were young that you wanted to eventually emigrate to the U.S.? No. So my husband and I decided to come to the U.S. Actually, it wasn't an immigration. We came here to get a degree in uh, financial mathematics, actually. And our plan was to get the degree, get like a year of experience in the U.S. and go back to Argentina. But that's been 22 years now. What kept you here longer than that first year? So I studied financial mathematics and it was nice to apply the mathematics uh, that I had learned in my college to things that were, were actually useful. But then I wanted to kind of know more about the, um, the math and the technical aspects of it. So I studied a PhD in statistics at the University of Chicago, and that's how we stayed here. Also, my husband got a job here and, you know, getting the similar jobs in Argentina was not as easy. So a little bit because of uh, economic reasons, but also because of interest. I really enjoyed learning the mathematics behind financial math. Uh, so I decided to dig deeper and start a PhD in statistics here at the University of Chicago. And I know you had your husband here, and I'm sure mm -hmm. they were a support to you during this time, as you were probably a support to them. But was it difficult to make that choice to stay in the U.S. and leave behind perhaps family, friends, people you had known in Argentina? It was a difficult decision, but, you know, the opportunities were here and not there. It, it was a no-brainer in that sense. And Haki, throughout this period where you are getting your education and you're furthering your expertise, were there any 
people, any professors, friends, family members who you turned to when you were struggling? My family, my father and mother have always been very supportive of me learning, continue learning to stay in academia. So they loved the fact that I was in academia. I briefly went to work in Wall Street and my father actually hated it. And he would even lie to his friends and tell them that I was still working at the University of Chicago. So I had a lot of support, family support for that. My husband was also very supportive of that. And the fact that he had a well-paying job helped for me to stay doing my uh, PhD. So yeah, a lot of family support. And in terms of mentorship, so I did a lot of different things. So my uh, PhD was in statistics and I wasn't really doing any of the genetics The important mentor I had was when I started in this field of statistical genetics, Nancy Cox. She's a professor at the University of Chicago. Actually, she moved to Vanderbilt University a few years ago, but she was really instrumental in getting me back into academia and getting me interested in this field that I find fascinating, actually. And Haki, I'm curious about that brief diversion over to Wall Street. What inspired that move to go work in the financial sector? My husband and I came to the U.S. with the goal of getting a master in financial mathematics and then getting a job, right? So, and my PhD in statistics was kind of a deviation from that original plan. But then I still thought that I would go back to industry and actually to the financial industry. And I actually did that and I hated it. (laughs) The thing that I didn't like about the financial industry was that the whole goal of uh, my job or my company was to make more money, right? So I felt it was very kind of an empty goal in itself. So you need money to survive. But I I didn't feel that having that as a goal was inspiring enough to me. Since the original plan was to go to financial industry, I did that. I worked in the financial industry. It was not nice. It's a place where, you know, I was on the trading floor. People are not nice to each other. And it's kind of, You know, it's not that people are not nice in general, but the environment makes you kind of not very nice person. As a woman, I wonder what that experience was like for you. It was not nice. And I think it's not nice for women and it's not nice for men either. And there's no privacy, right? The traders are sitting right next to each other and they are making money, screaming at each other. And this uh, woman that was sitting right in front of me, she was a managing partner or something like that, like a a high paying position. And she was very mean to men, right? And that was kind of the nature of it. That was normal. She would make jokes that I thought was completely out of place. And I don't know, I'm not saying she was a bad person, but it's kind of the environment takes you there, I think. So I'm glad I'm not there anymore. (laughs) So I I know you're not there in the financial world anymore, but what is it about academia that made you want to commit yourself to that profession instead? Well, so I like learning, learning new things. I just love, you know, discovering things and explaining things. And, you know, when there's a problem... I like to understand what's the cause of the problem. I feel like once you understand it, uh, you feel better about even if it's a problem that you have. I, I, I guess I was born to be a scientist because I just love learning about things. And how did you realize that you wanted to work in genomic data or genomic science. How did that come about for you? Because I know that's not really where you started. I never thought that I would be doing genetics. In fact, when I was doing my PhD in statistics, there was a group of people who were doing statistical genetics and I would hear their terminology and just run away because I thought it was, I just did not like it. But then when I came back to academia in 2000. 
2009, I started to collaborate with Nancy Cox, who's my uh, dear mentor. And she was doing these such cool things. And also it has to do with the fact that the genomic science, the people started to generate so much data that whatever I learned in statistics, all those tools could be applied to, to this huge amounts of data and glean insight into biology that it was really fascinating for me to be able to use the tools that I had learned to learn something about the biology of human diseases. And when you returned to academia, Haki, were there any challenges that you had to deal with, either personally or professionally? So if you want to do an academic career, right, uh, I wouldn't recommend anybody to follow my path because that's not the easiest path. So usually you would get your degree, uh, get your PhD, and then you know do well in your PhD and then move on to a postdoc where you learned slightly different skills with different mentors and that would introduce you to the field. And that's kind of the usual path. I went to industry, came back and so on. So yeah, coming back from industry is difficult. So getting a my position as a faculty member, it took many years. So when I came back, I was working, uh, my position was as a research faculty. And there is a sense that sort of you are not in the cutting edge, you are kind of in the support role. So changing that, um, that uh, view that people have of you was hard. That was a major challenge. And it took a while until I got into the tenure track where the regular faculty members do their careers. So where your academic career starts in a way. Has your work at the University of Chicago taken you out of the city for periods of time? Like, have you done any international work or any work in other parts of the country? So there's a lot of traveling, but very short term, like to conferences. So at most a week or something like that. But so my work is uh, I have collaborators across the world, so I do travel. I used to travel before the pandemic. Now I may start traveling again, but mostly to conferences and things like that. But most of the time I'm in Chicago. And I wouldn't want to be elsewhere because I like to see my kids grow. (laughs) Yeah. So what is the most gratifying thing that you do in your field? So two things, I would say. One is to make discoveries, right? We analyze data and we find something that, you know, no one else knows about, right? It may not be a breakthrough uh, discovery, but it is something that a lot of people may be thinking about and we, we find that out. So the thrill of discovery. Another thing is to see how my trainees grow. So I have students who join my lab or analysts who join my lab. And when they start, really, they really know very little about the field. And a couple of years later, I see how much they have learned and they are able to present in conferences, like a scientific project that we work on. And I love seeing their growth. And Haki, is there something that you're working toward? Is there a goal or something that you personally aspire to in this field? So what I do is I develop statistical methods to sort of sift through these huge amounts of data that the industry or the that the field is generating. And and the, my ultimate goal is to make discoveries that can really make a difference in the health of people. That's what I uh, strive for. What do you love about working at the University of Chicago specifically? I know it is this prestigious institution. What are the advantages and benefits of that? Many things. You get to work with very smart people and you get to learn from them. There's tons of talks and seminars and invited speakers that come here. It's a great place where you can learn from other people, find collaborations and find new ideas or new directions for your research as well. The other thing that's wonderful about academia, it's not specific to the University of Chicago, but it's like 
you get to choose to work in whatever you want to work on as long as you can get funding. Haki, you said earlier that your path was challenging because you left academia to work in the financial sector and then you've come back to academia. What would your advice be for people who are considering entering your field? I would say find your mentors, find your advocates, and do what you love doing. I think the main thing is you have to enjoy what you are doing. Your goal should not be getting a PhD in this prestigious university or getting a position in this, you know, prestigious uh, institution, but what makes you wake up in the morning, right? And try to do the best you can do is you really need to love what you're doing. So look for that thing that you love doing and go for it and find the equilibrium because your life is more than just your academic work and enjoy the ride. (laughs) I've been speaking with assistant professor Haik Young Im. Professor, thank you for your time. And course takers, if you enjoyed listening to today's interview, please check out the other ones. You can find out more about the University of Chicago through uchicago.edu or the university's campus in Hong Kong through uchicago.hk. Thanks for listening.